Week two of the Rhode Island Fall 17 League is in the books, and it's always better when my team wins, isn't it, guys? One and one, our first win tonight. We'll get to that in a second. But first, the week two post-game show, uh, we are looking for sponsors. So if you're interested in sponsoring the show or, you know, having us do a read, just like Barstool Sports, you know, we had a fitness guy last time. Fitness, fitness, fitness was my favorite thing to say. Um, we can work something out, so please get in touch with the league if you're interested. I'm here with the guys. We didn't prepare the names. Oh, God. Greg, Tyler, Mike. I nailed it. That would be embarrassing. I'm Joey as well. Uh, let's get into the games, our favorite way to transition into the games. We'll start with the last game here, Boom Shakalaka and the Skyhookers. I think coming in, we would have thought that might have been one of the ones to get out of hand. Right, and they were shooting free throws. You know, wasn't necessarily close, but um, there there was free throw shooting going on. That's a good sign for the Skyhookers. So, what from that game, uh, I guess, surprised you for maybe your expectations coming in? Uh, I think to start off, really that third quarter, I really think surprised me the most. They outscored them 29 to 14. Boom shot the locker that was good. Skyhookers? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I think that really like put them in a position to take the lead at the very end of the game and. You saw them trying to follow to like keep it close, but yeah. they just couldn't do anything. Especially, um, they couldn't stop the three ball tonight. Yeah, it seemed like every time they put it up, they knew it was going down. And I knew Boom Shakalaka was like a big team, but I didn't think they'd dominate Sky Hookers on the glass like that. They had 19 offensive rebounds, and a lot of them came in the second half. They were able to get out and run and do a lot. Yeah, nice. three guys were in double digits for rebounds, so it just shows how <laughs> they really killed it on the boards. And I think that's one of the main reasons why they won the game. Not only that, but their three point shooting was also pretty well. They, they pounded a team we all know and love so much, the Halfway Crooks. They pounded them on the boards last week. It was a huge reason they were able to blow that game open, and I think it was also a huge reason they, they won tonight. Uh, we'll do some, yeah, we're going to come back to this game later. Um, maybe do some power ranking notes at the end. Uh, let's get into Halfway Crooks and Big Baller Brand, the other semi-close game. Uh, the third quarter was key in this one. Uh, um, let's compare that first half to the second half and what you guys saw from both teams in both halves. Well, I think in the second half, uh, Halfway Crooks came out a lot quicker and was shooting the ball a lot more. And you can kind of tell that the five-man rotation killed Big Baller Brand. I mean, the first half they came out and they were up by 12 at half, but then second half they just seemed dead. They didn't really have much rotation, players not really like passing the ball, but then Halfway Crooks played a lot more like a team and spread the ball around. And I think the zone defense also killed Big Baller Brand. They weren't manning up. And, I mean, that's kind of to conserve energy in the end, but I think that also killed them. Yeah, definitely. They were uh, able to lock in on Cody in the second half. He had a big set, uh, big first half. He was pretty much carrying their team. And uh, halfway Crook started off the second half. I think it was a 14-0 run. Yeah. And that really got him back in the game, and they pulled away after that. Yeah, I think in that whole uh, third quarter, they only scored something like five points. And mm -hmm. um, it was the same story, I think, as last week, where Cody can only just do so much, where eventually teams just start to like hone in on him. and. They look for other people on the team to make plays, and tonight it just wasn't there for them. Especially when they had less guys than they had right. last week. Yeah, too. Right. Um, it's funny. My team, five guys last week, right? Now playing a team with five guys. The note on Brett, we mentioned it on the bench, and it's nice to kind of have this insight at a time like this, right? Brett played the whole first three quarters, I think. Most of, if not all. And then started the fourth quarter on the bench. I'm sure not by choice. Right, I'm sure he needed a little break. And then even when he came back out and his team was trying to like skate off a run, um, the legs weren't there. And I think he used a lot of energy trying to keep him in it, and it was a little too much in the end. The Alliance and Werewolves, two of our undefeated teams coming in, the Alliance takes care of business. Speaking of short benches, right? I mean, that team didn't have their full um, roster of players tonight and was still able to blow it open in the first quarter and then put on a show the rest of the night. But um, we could talk about, I mean, either side. I think the Alliance did what we expected. Were you expecting more out of the Werewolves? Uh, I think I was a little bit, but I just think the Alliance's like athleticism and physicality was just too overwhelming for the Werewolves to overcome after that early slow start. Yeah, once again, they just played defense and got out on the break. Max Matroni had 50, mm -hmm. 36 points tonight, and he had some thunderous dunks, and they're just too lanky and athletic for the Werewolves. I mean, the Werewolves couldn't really do much. They were just... Stag staggering on defense in terms of the alliance. So Werewolves played well, but it's just the alliance just outplayed them. One thing I like about the alliance the most is how much fun they have when they're out there. It <laughs> seems like they're always trying to get everyone like alley oops and lobs and the highlight plays, and it's just like they feed off that energy, and that's why they're in my eyes number one. There you go. So speaking <laughs> of the power rankings, uh, which team surprised you the most after week two? So now I think we have 
two undefeated teams, right? Boom Shakalaka and the Alliance. Werewolves were undefeated. They're one and one. Halfway Crooks one and one. Um, Big Ball and Brand zero and two. Skyhookers on the right? So two teams in each of those record categories. Which team surprised you the most? Um, the team that surprised me the most, I would probably say halfway groups, just because last week they looked so fatigued and so gassed come the end of the game, and you could really tell the difference with like adding a couple of players and getting that necessary break when needed. And towards the end of the game, they were able to close it out. Mm. I think Skyhookers kind of surprised me the most because they had a lot of depth for this game. They had AD, but they were kind of like shifting like lines like hockey. Yep. They had four guys in in and out constantly, and it still wasn't enough for them to keep up. Yeah, I'd say halfway crooks. I mean, you guys got the W, so... He knows, one, how, to, he knows one, how to suck up over there. No, not only that, but the two players, the two bigs you added, I think it's going to help you down the stretch of the season. I mean, obviously the big baller brand was a little short, but the way you guys came out in the second half really impressed me compared to that first half. And you started to play a little more team basketball, and you were looking like Steve Nash out there. Well, so. thank you. <laughs> it means a lot. Yeah, that's, that's two in the same, uh, it's two, you know, sucking up comments in the same, in the same analogy. Double yeah. whammy. Pretty good. You guys should... Take notes from, from Greg over there. Um, <laughs> you can, yeah. As uh, Tyler takes some notes, you can see the highlights on legacy underscore RI on Snapchat, legacy underscore leagues on Twitter and Instagram. We try to keep you updated there. Top plays and power rankings coming out, I think Saturday and Sunday is what we did last week. We'll try to keep it consistent. Highlights will be edited for Friday day and tomorrow which is Thursday when you'll be watching this, recap articles and, and stats on the site as always, so uh, check for those. Week three next week, I know, uh, I'm not sure of the matchups, anyone know for sure who plays? I don't know, we no, clearly I'm didn't prepare. Sure. <laughs> uh, I know halfway plays the, the Skyhookers, so we'll see. That would be, I'm, not, I'm no longer thinking, you know, cakewalk. <laughs> this is after the first week. But hey, when, when you play the Alliance, things happen. So I think they showed a lot, and I think anyone we showed that the first week. Anybody can beat anybody. Um, so definitely have to come to play. Week three next Wednesday starts at 6 o'clock here at Wakefield Hills School. For the guys, I'm Joey. We will see you on Wednesday. Stay tuned to TheLegacyLeagues.com for stats and recaps. We'll see you in week three.